This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got some massive games between title contenders coming up in week number three across the NFL. We're going to break down those games where we're seeing some betting value within them and lay out our favorite bets across week three in the NFL. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here as I am each Thursday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, I'm sorry that the Houston uh, Chicago game did not make the rundown for this week. Maybe <laughs> if they get a rematch in like Super Bowl, we can talk about that game, but yeah. not on the list for this week. A couple other good games, though. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Jim. You know, we're just trying to give the people what they want. They want they want to hear the picks. They want to hear the leans. And and we're hoping that uh, we can be as successful in week three as we were the first two weeks. So, I mean, you're on a heater. So, uh, you know, we're just going <laughs> to we're going to try to I'm going to try to lean on you because I was not as good as you last week. So I got to I got to pick up some of the Ryan vibes to, to pick up the slack here. in Week number three. Let's the good it. thing is I feel kind of OK. About how week three is looking so far. Got some good movement on the early week bets. So we're feeling all right. We'll see if that actually translates to results or not. Not sure. We'll dive into the week's biggest games and outline some other things on our minds for week three in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our college football week four betting preview with Dr. Ed Fang is now posted up on uh, the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on FanDuel's YouTube page. Check out both those video version and audio version wherever you get your podcasts or your videos. Be sure to check that out uh, with Ed. We'll also have a player prop preview tomorrow. JJ Zacharyson getting a rundown of his favorite props for week number three as well. That also here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. Twisted T and FanDuel are, have joined forces to bring you a one-of-a-kind contest series. It gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in site credit. Introducing Twisted T's College Football Picks, a sports betting-focused contest series that is entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned money line, spread, and total markets with assigned points to each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for each correct selection you made. If at the end of the day your score ranks among the best in the contest, you'll be eligible for your share of site credit. Head to fanduel.com slash twisted t picks and make your picks. And reminder, please drink responsibly. Fanduel.com slash twisted t picks. And before we dive into the biggest games of this week, Ryan, did want to pick your brain quickly about how you kind of lay out your thought process on offenses that have struggled through two weeks. One week, I get it. Two weeks, a little bit concerning. The Bengals, Broncos, uh, off to slow starts this year, other slow starts for other big offenses as well. Let's talk about how you view those teams heading into week three. What are you doing to try to decide whether the early season issues are legit, the small sample issues are legit, or if we should expect them to bounce back to where we expect them to be in the preseason. Yeah. So I think we'll, we'll start off with Denver um, mm -hmm. to, to start because I know Denver was, you know, they get Russell Wilson uh, books are moving them. You know, people are thinking Denver could be a Super Bowl favorite. All they needed was a quarterback to get them over the hump. Look at their offense, look at the defense. And it's just that simple. But I mean, I hate taking Pete Carroll's side in anything, but it's it's just like may, maybe Seattle was like ahead of the curve on like, you know, get, getting, you know, saying that, hey, look at this draft that's upcoming. There's all of these studs quarterbacks coming from college. Russ is getting a little bit older. And and we kind of have seen that. I mean, he had a tough matchup week one against his former team on the road. And then you're looking at, you know, a Houston team. But just the points, you know, what we're expecting, the let let Russ cook season um, that it that that's gone. Like we, we yeah. just got to let that let that subside. And I just got to be taking the teams on the other side of Denver right now until Denver can prove to me that they can handle a, you know, take on some of these teams. And maybe maybe it's one of those things where. You know, Seattle, it's Geno Smith. We weren't, you know, we were expecting them to kind of handle them easily and that there wouldn't be much there. Houston, the same type of thing. Oh, this team should just be blowing them out. Maybe they're playing down to their competition, Jim. So I would love, you know, the 49ers game is going to be interesting with Jimmy G back. Uh, then they get Vegas, then they get Indy, and then the Chargers. So I think this stretch is going to tell us a lot about Denver and maybe they play up to their competition. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals, real quickly, you know, this is a team 
that they're getting off to a historically bad start when you're talking about being in the Super Bowl um, from the previous year and coming in and starting off 0-2. Now, in Week 3, when a team has started 0-2 and, and made the playoffs, they are favorable in that in that Week 3 matchup. And you can tell that the Sharps and the public, they're all over Cincinnati right now. I mean, the money is like at 90%, I believe, in this game against the Jets. And I expect it. I, you know, that's where it should be. That's fair because they they have everything on the wall to right the ship. They just got to figure out how to get Joe Burrow to get the get rid of the ball more quickly. The offensive line has not done him any favors, even though they got new pieces in there. But they still have explosive weapons across the board. I know you're a Joe Mixon guy. They still got Chase. They still got Higgins. They still got Tyler Boyd. This defense needs to be a little bit better. And this is, you know, the Jets eked one out with Joe Flacco last week, but this is probably the prime get right spot for a team that had a start like this. So I think that we do see Cincinnati come to the mold. And remember Jim last year, like people were pretty much not really on the Cincinnati bandwagon until it came down to those last two weeks of the regular season in fantasy playoffs when Joe Pearl magic came through. I mean, he, he's still a young quarterback as opposed to Russ. I still think he's got a left, a lot left in the tank and we could be looking back on these two weeks just and laughing at ourselves that we weren't, you know, high on the Cincinnati Bengals going forward. Yeah, I'll need Mixon this week for DFS, so slight request <laughs> yeah. that he go nuts this week. You mentioned the public and the Sharps liking the Bengals this week. That number did move to 5.5. I think that was the correct move. I had it at 5.3, so it's a stay away at 5.5 for me, but uh, 86% of the money is on the Bengals' side of the spread here and 77% of the bets. So like you said, that does back up what you were saying about how everyone's on the Bengals, so not really even a buy-low spot if everyone is on it, unfortunately. But uh, the market... The market catching up and I think correctly evaluating at least that offense. I think they might be overacting a tiny, tiny, tiny bit to Denver, but I mean, kind of to your point, it's weird that you've got a, a team facing a quarterback who, or a team that just lost their starting quarterback. And somehow the opposing team may have more continuity across their entire team, especially with uh, George Kittle potentially back for this week. So let's dive in now to our key games for week number three, starting off with a huge battle in the AFC East. That is the Bills at the Dolphins. Bills, six and a half point favorites, total 52 and a half. This was five and a half yesterday. It was six at open. Then bet to five and a half. Now bet back to six and a half. So a lot of movement here, a lot of interest in this game. The Dolphins did light things up in the second half against the Ravens, but they're facing a, a Bills team that has lit up everyone for ever since the, the playoffs last year, effectively. So do you buy enough into the Dolphins here to potentially bet them or are the Bills covering once again? Yeah, it's it's just hard to bet against the Bills uh, at this point. I mean, when you're looking at Josh Allen's history against the Miami Dolphins, he's only lost to them once in his entire career. And Buffalo in these games has been winning on an average victory of 19 points uh, against this team. I mean, and you're looking at these past matchups with Tua playing, you know, because before it was Ryan Fitzmagic who was getting who was getting the brunt of this. But uh, it, they they just haven't been they just haven't been able to get over this hump. Whether it's you know bringing everybody down there to Miami, which we've seen on social media, like the Dolphins are all in on playing at home at this time and they want to come down and the, you know, the weather they feel like is at their advantage. It does not matter to Josh Allen. Um, and it, you know, if they're going to be shellacking teams, you know, on, uh, in the public eye, you know, on prime time, then I got to, you know, be taking them here um, when this game is kind of buried, so to speak in the Sunday slate. Um, I do, I do like, you know, Tua to still be aggressive in this matchup. And they do have pieces that match up, especially with that secondary for Buffalo being banged up as is. So the total is interesting to me too, even at 52 and a half, I do think that this game has a chance to go bananas. And we know that Buffalo, I mean, anytime Buffalo's on the field, this team's going to have an implied team total of over 28. So you're expecting, yeah. you know, four touchdowns to come from the Buffalo side in any way, shape or fashion. If, you know, Tua can muster up two, three, four touchdowns on his side. I mean, you, you can talk yourself into this game going way over the 52 and a half. Yeah, so one thing you mentioned was the injuries, and that's true for both sides in the secondary specifically, which could lend itself towards the total here. Uh, Xavier Howard did not practice on Wednesday. He's got a groin injury. He suffered that against the Ravens, so he's a question mark there. But then you look at the Bills injury report, and they have one, two, three, uh, four different guys in their secondary on the injury report. Now, some of those guys were full practice and stuff like that, but Micah Hyde didn't practice. Dane Jackson didn't practice. They're pretty banged up. The one concern I have with the total is wind because right now it's at uh, 12 miles per hour. I have no concerns about Josh Allen ripping it through that. If it's not like 40, like it was in that Patriots game last year, he's probably going to be okay. 
Two was more of a question mark in the wind um, from that perspective. So my numbers do show value on the Dolphins here. I will not bet that. I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Like it, <laughs> we need probably seven and a half for me to bite. And I don't think we're going to get there. So I'm not going right. at that. Um, I think the total of 52 and a half is interesting. Is that high? Is that low enough where you would bet the over here? Or is it more so a lean on your perspective? The, the total gem at 52 yeah. and a half. Yeah, I, I would bet it. I mean, okay. um, I, I, I just think, you know, there's teams that I just always I'm looking at totals and I'm like, can I talk myself into this? And I mean, we talked about, I talked about the Baltimore and Miami game yeah. last week of going over whatever that number was 44, but you're just looking at the quarterbacks and how the offenses like to play on each side of the ball. And we know that we, we know that with Buffalo, I mean, if you're not getting, you know, 53, 54 number, that's when I start to get a little bit weary um, when the number's over that it's just like, they're going to put up points. And so yeah. who's the other team on the other side, this isn't, you know, we're not talking about the Houston Texans or the Chicago bears. We're talking about the dolphins right. who, you know, just put up 28 points in one quarter um, <laughs> last week. So I think, you know, and Buffalo gets out to a, either way, if Buffalo gets out to the lead or if Miami somehow gets out to an early lead, we know they're going to be aggressive. And that's what I, I like to look at when I'm looking at the total number. Yeah, for sure. Like I have my reservations around the wind, but when you combine the secondary injuries with how pass heavy both these teams are, neither team can run the football. And I think that's a huge benefit for a total in this game. Let's move now to the Eagles at commanders Eagles, six and a half point favorites here, total 47 and a half. And we talked about the Eagles team on our Monday night preview, but like when I was watching this game, Every snap, it felt inevitable. They were going to get 10 yards, like every single time. But, like that offensive line was just moving dudes. They're healthy right now. Uh, Jalen Hurts looked fantastic, whether it be as a rusher or as a passer. So my question for you, Ryan, is can the man commanders keep this thing close or are the Eagles just too dominant for us to even consider betting the commander side of this one? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a number that makes me feel uncomfortable, Jim. I said, you know, on the Monday show that we would kind of know a lot about either team of the Eagles and, and Vikings. And to a certain extent, I feel like we do. I mean, the yeah. Eagles just were handling that matchup so, so favorably. And you love that they can, you know, they don't need to do a lot as not really a, sh a short week, but a short ish week as the way that the commanders are handling the run. Like in, you know, if they don't need to be ha pass heavy, the Eagles, that is, I could see them, you know, establishing the three headed monster of Miles Sanders, Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell. So uh, while I don't, I don't really like the number, you know, I get why the public is all over this taking the Philly side of things because we just saw what they did, you know, on primetime in Monday Night Football against a competitive team. Now, where I do come in on this game, Jim, is also the over here. The total is 47 and a half. Like this is I just wrote down in my notes, like you just have to hammer the over in this matchup <laughs> because of how Carson Wentz plays. I mean, we've seen this time right. and time again, Philly. Indy now at Washington this dude will be aggressive regardless he could go out there and throw four picks and be different you know Minnesota was doing this they return the ball over and then they try and get Dablin cook the ball and then he's not getting anywhere and then they just they didn't get into a rhythm on offense this is they're they're just going to abandon the run absolutely if Philly gets out to an early lead here and they're just going to say okay Carson Wentz like throw it up to Terry throw it up to Jahan see what you can do um, and this this total really should be coming at like a 48 number, 48 and a half. And it's it's just too low for me. So that's where I'm leaning in this game. As yeah, stands. both these teams are pretty pass heavy based on like uh, pass rate over expectation, those kinds of numbers. And I think that's always conducive towards an over two. And I think that it makes sense with the commanders like they always I think at their core, like a, a Turner led offense wants to be pass heavy, but they couldn't really do that when their quarterback was Taylor Heineke. Right. Carson Wentz, despite his flaws, is someone who is better for that type of approach than uh, but he's also just like an over quarterback, because like you said, the mistakes lead to overs, but also the spikes, the things he can do well lead to overs, too. So with the way that this commander's defense has played so far, I have no objections to that. I think that makes a lot of sense. My numbers have this as the Eagles by 3.31. So which which would indicate again value on the commander's side, but similar to that Dolphins number, I just can't do it. Like I I can't I can't pull the trigger on that. Like I will take less value if I feel better about the situation. I don't feel good about this one. Like my my priors were high on the Eagles coming into this year. And the prior is the largest chunk of my model right now. It's it's a hefty, hefty chunk of it. So despite it being high on the Eagles there, despite the early season data loving them as well, I can't get six and a half. That could mean that I'm just a dummy for not taking the commanders here. That could be the takeaway here. But right. 
I don't know. I just can't get there. Like it's, I don't know if you have this, but like for me, when I, I think about the idea of betting the commanders, I just think back to Monday night, snap 10 yards, snap 10 yards, <laughs> snap 10 yards for that Eagles offense. And I, I can't get there. So yep. I think that does lend itself towards the over as well, uh, to your point earlier. Yeah, and, ab- and absolutely. And that pe- the public is actually agreeing with you, Jim, and your numbers on taking the Washington side. There's the percentage um, the percentage of the of the bets are actually going to the Washington side of things. And the money is actually split evenly as it stands right now at 50-50. So everybody's having a struggle with this game. Uh, but the Eagles, you know, let, let's just give them credit where credit is due. I mean, they deserve to have this number right now. Jalen Hurts looks absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, the defense has been absolutely incredible. Like, I do think Carson Wentz might be seeing nightmares depending on how this game goes either way like they could squeak out a win maybe but like he's he's going to be in trouble maybe turning the ball over multiple times here um so I I I would probably lean Eagles um at this number because it seems like we're we're going to if if they are able to win this game handedly we're going to start getting like favorable numbers over seven for Eagles and some favorable matchups going forward yeah, Carson Wentz is an agent of chaos, which means you want to bet into more like volatile markets. Um, so if you are out there listening and you believe in the commanders, I'd bet the money line instead of the spread. Plus 240, the money line there. I'm not doing that either, just to be fully transparent. But um, if you believe in Carson Wentz and you want to take advantage of the volatility, go for the higher upside market. And that is the money line uh, with the commanders there. And I'm showing value there as well, for the record. But again, not going to bet it because I just have nightmares about Monday night. Let's finish up here with the Packers at the Buccaneers. Bucks, one and a half point favorites, total 50 or 41 and a half. And I was joking on Twitter on Sunday about adding a vibes uh, like meter into my model because of the Cardinals and because they had bad vibes and were losing at that time. And I was tilting. They did win. But I feel like with the Bucks, maybe I actually do want to add in the vibes, uh, the vibes meter because vibes real bad right now, Ryan. They are not yeah. good. Um, they're missing a ton of guys right now. Mike Evans suspended. Chris Godwin, Julio Jones didn't practice Wednesday. Scotty Miller, Rashad Perriman, Russell Gage all limited. Donovan Smith didn't practice. But the Bucks still point and a half favorites here. So can they overcome those injuries? Or are you riding with Green Bay, who was good to you on Sunday night? Yeah, I mean, I. I... Listen, I'm going to take the buck side here and it, and it doesn't feel good, Jim. You know, things are not good down there in Tampa Bay, but they still got Brady. And so when we're looking at how to decipher this matchup, I'm just going back to what the historical data is telling me. And, you know, Rodgers and Brady, when they meet up the past four matchups, Brady's had his number three and one against the spread. And Brady as a as a favorite under a field goal, he's eleven and three, I believe, all time against the spread as well. And you're looking at Aaron Rodgers' numbers. Like this guy does not turn the ball over, but in the past two games against Tampa Bay, two interceptions and then one interception. So averaging one and a half interceptions in the past matchups, that's that's crazy compared to what his career number is. Uh, I, I got to like the Bucks here, and the reason being, Jim, is that the way this defense is playing right now is absolutely incredible. Like it, if they can be, you know, if they can be healthy. Um, at most of their pieces on the defensive side of the ball, they give Rodgers trouble and they're going to give these backs trouble. And that's been the best thing that Green Bay has had going for them with these wide receivers still getting acclimated. I mean, outside of Randall Cobb, who's like been 18 years in the league and still catching passes, um, you know, where's Rob Gronkowski to come out of retirement for Brady? But, uh, right. you know, this they're going to have a hard time getting A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones uh, – to establish the run against this defense. Maybe they start using them in some pass catching abilities to get the ball out quickly, but I do like the Tampa Bay side of things. Um, just where the data is pointing at at one and a half. Yeah. I think it's, it's situation where I, this is a complete toss up right now. It's the bucks by 0.13 points. So the money line is actually minus one or two on the Packers side, which means there's no value there. I don't see any value on the, on the bucks money line either. I think that it's a stay away from me. If maybe we get David Bakhtiari ruled out again for the Packers, that could be a situation that would lend itself uh, towards the Buck side. But vibes meter is real bad. And I can't, uh, after the Cardinals stuff, even though they did come back to me, I can't bet against bad vibes so or bet on bad vibes. So right. a little bit wary, a little bit wary. Cluster injuries also worry me. But who, who are we to doubt <laughs> a uh, suburban kid, Scotty Miller from Barrington, Illinois? Ooh. Obviously, who needs Julio when you got Scotty Miller, right? 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, Scotty Miller better, you know, he he better be watching the replacements and get that stick them that they uh, <laughs> put on the hands there because the way that these guys were dropping the ball last week yeah. and Brady's reaction, you know, he, he's going to be, I, I'm sure practice has been uh, quite interesting for the receiving crew this year. But it is funny, Jim, when you're talking about these two teams, it's like the Spider-Man meme, you know, yeah, it is. Tampa yeah, it Bay is. And, and Green Bay is pretty much the same team without, you know, these wide receivers who are playing right. for them, like no Devontae Adams, no Mike Evans. Um, they got all of these young pieces and, and players who are no names catching the ball from these legendary quarterbacks. It's it's pretty funny. I think I would actually go uh, the little Giants route uh, with like the the pine tar, full pine tar yes. on the hands. Uh, given what happened to Tyler Johnson after the playoff game last year, we had a couple drops and then got jettisoned to, to Houston. I don't want that. So right. I'm going full pine tar. We're not we're not settling <laughs> for just stick him. It's pine tar uh, for Love me it. there. Let's open up the board to you, Ryan. Where else do you see in value across week three in the NFL? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's tough. I'm, I'm not sure about value, so to speak, but I am interested, like I said uh, at the beginning, you know, I'm the, the Broncos got to prove it to me. Uh, 49ers getting two and a half points. Jimmy G is back here. Um, you know, it, it, maybe, maybe things I believe this game is in Denver. So maybe things kind of go right for, for Denver here um, as they, you know, get another home game. But the 49ers, you know, they they seem to be. Um, clicking and rallying behind Jimmy G being back. So that'll be an interesting one. The Cincinnati one, you know, it's hard because the line has been moving. I believe it opened around. Well, I don't know what the number it opened at, but I saw it on Sunday at four and a half. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they just keep getting bet up. I believe it's now five, five and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so it opened at five, uh, actually. Okay. So it was kind of been fluctuating a little bit. Who's but I am the Jets in... at five to move to four and a half. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I get well, the they... Bengals a struggle, but buddy. <laughs> Yeah. I, hey, listen, you know, they just, you know, when you're talking about seeing these games on Sunday, right? So like the Jets, they eke out that victory against yeah. the Browns. And some some people might have been, you know, riding that way. Sure. Uh, but I do like Cincinnati to kind of rebound yeah. here. I know that number seems a little bit tough. Um, and I'm going with my home team, uh, the Chicago Bears here with, you know, just even taking the money line on them, I think has some merit. I know that, you know, people are talking up Houston, like what a win, a win can mean for them in the AFC South, because that division is so depleted and so disgusting that they could be one, one and one and yeah. leading the division um, because of how things have gone and, and the win over Indy. So um that i think that is an interesting game too but i expect you know they, it's such a favorable matchup for david montgomery and khalil herbert and the home crowd rocking like i'm liking the bear side of that game i i do need a texans win for their 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 total their win total at some point because it was a three and a half and missing out on a tie having a tie in there kind of a bummer yep. they played tight against denver i need wins at some point guys so like let's let's not no more moral victories let's get actual victories i need that for the the, the win total there so <laughs> please help me out here uh one i wanted to run by you one i did not talk about on tuesday show that i just had it today and do like and have bet it's the chiefs minus five and a half uh, i've seen a lot of twitter interest in the Colts side of this game and i get it i get it because we're trying to buy low on a team that was missing massively key pieces last week. And it looks like Michael Pittman should be back. Alec Pierce should be back, but it's also the chiefs. I was not super high on this, uh, this Colts team coming into the year. So it's kind of like confirming my priors that they've um, played poorly so far. I've got the chiefs favored by 7.9 points in this game. So I've laid the five and a half. Once it got there, it was six and a half and moved to five and a half. I get the thought process behind buying the Colts, but I can't do it, Ryan. So I'm on the Chiefs minus five and a half. What's your read on that one specifically? Yeah, this this is a tough one for me, and I didn't want to, you know, have this be a part of my card, as we say, so to speak. <laughs> but I took the Chiefs, I hammered the Chiefs at six and a half. Yeah. So you can only imagine what I did when it came down to five and a half. Um, and it, what it comes down to, because they're, they're a tough team against the spread, and we talked about them, you know, a lot when they are, you know, kind of these heavy favorites. Um, and, and five and a half makes it even more favorable. But at six and a half, I was kind of just like, you know, it was just a read that I get. It is Indy's yeah. first home game of the season, I believe. Um, but Matt Ryan has just looked lost in this offense. And if it comes down to him needing to be aggressive or 
Hopefully they can get Jonathan Taylor going. I don't. What did he have? Ten touches last week or something? Just disgusting. It was not great. All, Un- he killed. I had like Christian Kirk, Jonathan Taylor, mini game stacks in DFS, and the Christian <laughs> yeah. Kirk side is great. The Jonathan Taylor side, shockingly, was the part that dragged those down. Yeah, it makes sense. You think Jonathan Taylor goes out, puts up a number, then they need to pass Christian Kirk gets the volume. That's what so I, 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 yeah. I get that. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I mean, you know, if they can, you know, get Kelsey going here, and you know, I, I know it's they said it was going to be a revolving door. Patch Mahomes, who's going to be the leading receiver. Uh, maybe this is a juju game, you know, playing in the slot and having a favorable matchup for himself against this team. But uh, yeah, Kansas City, five and a half. I'm just going to take that and, you know, let Indy prove it to me. Let Matt Ryan prove it to me that they can, you know, cover this number against a team that is much better than them on paper. That's where I'm at as well. So I did lay the five and a half with the Chiefs there. That is all that we have here for week number three. Typically, we'll give like a two minute thoughts on Thursday night, but I'm not going to bother like that. Game <laughs> so I'm not going to subject you to talking about that game, Ryan. Beautiful. We'll just uh, close up shop for this week and move forward to tomorrow's player prop breakdown with JJ Zacharies and get that by subscribing to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Ryan, I want to thank you once again for joining me for today. Good luck to you this week. We'll talk to you once again soon. Yeah, it was great to be here again, Jim. And good luck to you and your leans and not rooting for your Houston win there. But yeah, are you going to be that, at the game? Are you luck. going? I am going to be at the okay, game. Yes. Good. Well, have so, fun. I hope it goes well for good. you. Um, I will. I'll. I'll push my Houston hopes to next week. We'll. We'll <laughs> worry about that later on. Have fun. Fair enough. Game. Fair enough. Good luck, everybody. You can find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you this week. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down our player props for week three. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 